Colonel John Frost led 2nd Battalion of the British 1st Airborne Division to Arnhem Bridge on the 17th of September 1944. His was the only battalion to reach the objective and he was widely acknowledged as the most experienced paratroop commander in the whole of 1st Airborne Division. In his book, A Drop Too Many, which was published after Cornelius Ryan's book, A Bridge Too Far, and after the film of the same name, A Bridge Too Far, Frost gives his reasons for the failure of Operation Market Garden. He states, The same voice that had so firmly said to Roy Urquhart, Arnhem Bridge and Hold It, said to James Gavin of the US 82nd Airborne Division, The Groosbeek Heights, Nijmegen Bridge, later. Nijmegen Bridge was not taken on day one, leading to a critical 36 hour delay, by which point Frost's battalion was annihilated and Arnhem was solely in German hands. The 36 hour delay was caused because the 82nd Airborne Division delayed their advance on the Nijmegen Bridge on day one. By the time they got going towards the bridge, after seven and a half hours of sitting around at the Grosbeek Heights, it was too late. Part of a German panzer division arrived and dug in at Nijmegen, preventing the two platoons of American paratroopers that eventually did go to Nijmegen from taking the bridge. The next day, these platoons were withdrawn back to the Grusbeek Heights to protect it from the German 406th Division, which was neither a division nor a threat to the 82nd Airborne. When 30 Corps arrived at Nijmegen at the beginning of day three, with the whole day to go, the last eight miles to Arnhem, it had to fight for the city and the bridge at Nijmegen with the help of the 82nd Airborne. After a 36 hour delay, it was too late to save Frost Battalion and Market Garden ultimately failed. Frost places the blame on the person who prioritized the Grusbeek Heights, which was a small hill to the east of Nijmegen, over the critical Nijmegen Bridge. That person was General Frederick Boy Browning, the commander of 1st Airborne Corps. In Frost's version of events, Browning ordered Gavin of the 82nd Airborne not to go from the Nijmegen Bridge until Grusbeek Heights were secure. The main reason Frost gives for this was because Browning wanted to set up his HQ on the Heights. He also mentions that there was a rumour about German armour in the Reichswald, a forest slightly further east from the Grusbeek Heights. But this was only a rumour and never actually confirmed, and in reality there was nothing in the Reichswald at all. Frost does not lay the blame for the failure of Operation Market Garden on General Gavin of the 82nd Airborne, instead praising him and his division for their crossing of the Val River in boats as one of the bravest feats of all time. Frost places the blame for the most critical error in the Market Garden operation on Browning. However, by far the worst mistake was the lack of priority given to the capture of Nijmegen Bridge. The whole essence of the plan was to lay an airborne carpet across the obstacles in southern Holland so that the army could motor through. Yet the capture of this, perhaps the biggest and most vital bridge, in that its destruction would have sounded the death knell of the troops committed at Arnhem, was not accorded priority. The capture of this bridge would have been a walkover on D-Day. Yet the American 82nd Airborne Division could only spare one battalion as they must at all costs secure a feature called the Grusbeek Heights, where, incidentally, the HQ of Airborne Corps was to be sighted. It was thought that the retention of this feature would prevent the debouchement of German armour from the Reichswald in Germany. This armour was there by courtesy of rumour only, and its presence was not confirmed by the underground. In fact, as a feature, it is by no means dominating, and its retention or otherwise had absolutely no bearing on what happened at Nijmegen Bridge. Frost goes on to say that Browning and his HQ were nothing more than a nuisance, and should have remained back in Britain, out of the way. Noticeably, he doesn't call out Browning by name, but he makes it very clear who he's actually on about. Now, in my documentary on Operation Market Garden, links everywhere, where I went into detail about every aspect of the battle, I concluded by blaming General Gavin of the 82nd Airborne. And I did that because some historians think he was ultimately to blame for not taking the Nijmegen Bridge, and he himself admits this 
was his decision ultimately. But he also says he got permission to prioritise the Grusbeek Heights from his corps commander, which was Browning. So, was Frost right? Was Browning ultimately to blame for the failure to take Nijmegen Bridge, and ultimately the person who needs to take the blame for the failure of Operation Market Garden? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to my patrons, I've just purchased a biography on General Frederick Boy Browning, and I cannot wait to make a video on this bad boy. And I know a lot of people hate Montgomery, mainly Americans, but I don't think Montgomery is the big bad guy of this battle. That honour definitely, definitely goes to Browning. His treatment of Sosabowski, the Polish general, is just unforgivable. But I'm going to try and remain as neutral as possible, even though all the evidence I have from every other source is damning on Browning. And I will give him and his biographer a chance to set the record straight. And this is the challenge of history, trying to remain balanced, open-minded, calm, collected, and willing to consider all different views before making a big decision like this. So, yeah, I'm going to make a video on Browning. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.